Manga Wido. I'm Yua. As you can see, I'm pretty, if I do say so myself. I've been scouted on the streets and even modeled for a magazine when I was in kindergarten. My sister Miyu, who's four years younger than me, wasn't as good looking as me, so it fed my ego even more. Miyu's so ugly, no one gives you attention, right? She's gonna get hurt if you tell her the truth like that! I've had five guys ask me out this year. How many did you get? Stop that! It would be awful if she gets depressed and withdraws from the family. Our family always teased Miyu and laughed at her. After entering middle school, the number of people circling around me increased. I want to try modeling too! Can I go to your photo shoot and watch? I don't mind, but I think you would only make me look better. Are you serious? Whatever! People's feelings get hurt when I'm just telling the truth. Ordinary girls are no good. Aside from the girls, there were plenty of guys who came on to me, and I had a reasonably good school life in junior high and high school. Modeling work was going well. I was even interviewed on TV from time to time, although it was for a local station. Do you want to start going to an aesthetic salon to become a top model? How about studying abroad for a short time? You'll have a good reputation if you study abroad. Parents have been like this for a long time. They would drive me places and bought me anything I wanted, even the most expensive brand name items. My sister Miyu was attending one of the top public high schools in the prefecture at the time. But even if you have the brains, you're worthless if you don't look good, right? The dull Miyu was treated at home as if she didn't exist. Sis, I need you to stop making loud noises in the middle of the night. Huh? I'm just venting with my model friends. What's wrong with taking out some stress? But, um, it's hard for me to concentrate on my studies. That's none of my business. If you want to complain, go to the library to study. Don't talk back to me. I yelled, and Miyu went back to her room. I'm the center of this house. I won't let you complain. When I became the exclusive model for a certain magazine, the money started coming in steadily, and my parents were proud of me even more. You're such a good girl, you are! I'm glad I had you! My parents were so happy that they listened to everything I said. But then one day, all of a sudden, that happiness ended. Watch out! What? I lost one of my legs when a car ran a red light into me. It was my sophomore year of college. At the time, I still thought my parents' love was real, so I thought they would comfort and encourage me. But my parents stopped coming to the hospital just three days after the accident. Why aren't mom and dad coming? Miu, you know anything? They're both so eager to get medical bills and compensation from the other party. I called Miyu on the phone and lashed out at her, and that was the reply I got. At that moment, I understood. My parents didn't love me. They loved the money I was making. My parents finally came to the hospital when it came time to discuss my leave, but... It's not like she's gonna grow a leg after treatment, so I'll leave the treatment plan up to you. The doctor was stunned by this attitude. I cried. I was more shocked by my parents' coldness than from losing my own leg. But more shock awaited me when I got out of the hospital. Oh, fifth place in class! That's great, Miu! You can get into any college with that. Get into a good company and make it easy for us! Cheerful voices would be heard from the living room when I got home. It was all towards my sister Miu. I loved this house so much, but from that day on, it was nothing but hell for me. My parents now treated me like an obstacle, but I still hadn't given up hope. If I could get my legs to work, I could model again, make money, and get my parents to pay attention to me. I believed that, and I put on the prosthetic leg and rehabbed hard, but I'm busy taking me you to cram school. If you want to rely on someone, go to your aunt. My parents didn't turn to me after all. I honestly thought it would be easier to die. But I couldn't stop thinking about the nurses and physical therapists who had saved my life and worked so hard to support me. Aunt, I need your help. Please.
I called my aunt, who was a nurse, as my mother told me. My aunt, who knew my attitude as a child. What is it all of a sudden? She was annoyed at first, but when I cried out, I don't have anyone else to rely on. She reluctantly began to take care of me. Rehab, maintenance of my prosthetics, support with my wheelchair, and so on. My aunt supported me using all of her knowledge. To be honest, I never really liked you, but my brother and sister-in-law's attitude infuriate me. Let's get you properly rehabilitated and show them off. Thanks, auntie. Your home is suffocating, isn't it? You can live here. My aunt used to live with my disabled grandmother, so her house had been remodeled for her care. I decided to stay with my aunt. I told my parents, but all they told me was to do as I please. I went outside with my aunt for rehab where I was met with my classmates. It was the girls I dismissed and looked down upon back then. They looked at me from afar, mockingly. Some of them even said, That's karma. You're right. I believe it was retribution for all the things I'd done to people around me. I've been living my whole life looking down on everyone around me. I feel ashamed. I finally realize now that I'm in a vulnerable position. What an awful person I am. It's good that you acknowledge it at least. You just have to triumph those kids who make fun of you. You uh, you're doing your best. People who see you will definitely notice your effort. You'll get to smile again soon. Thanks to my aunt's encouragement, I worked hard on my rehab. I posted my current situation on social media and blogs and wrote if anyone knew of good rehab methods. Two years after the accident, it was around the time I started getting used to living with prosthetics as I was able to go out by myself. You a long time no see. I'm Takano. We used to work together for a magazine. Would you like to meet? A photographer I used to know contacted me. I thought it might be nice to talk about old times, so we met up at a cafe. Really? To my surprise, the magazine's editor came along as well. Would you like to stand in front of the camera again as a model with a prosthetic leg? They asked me. They felt I would get a lot of buzz because of the blogs I was writing and the number of followers I had on social media. Thus, I made my comeback as a model. Good for you, Yua. Auntie, it's all thanks to you. Thank you, thank you so much. A photo of me in a miniskirt with my prosthetics became the talk of the town, and I started to make appearances on TV again. When I talked about my accident, my painful rehab, and how my aunt saved my life, everyone listened to me in tears. I was finally able to say, I'm so thankful to be alive. But it wasn't all good. I was so surprised when I saw you on TV! You're famous now! You must get a lot of money, right? Give us some of it. We'll use it to pay for Mew's tutoring. My parents, whom I haven't heard from in a long time, came over to my aunt's house and suddenly started talking like that. My aunt managed to turn them away, and when I called Miyu afterwards, I found out what was going on. Miyu was accepted to the university she wanted to go, but the parents turned her down, saying, You can aim higher, and they forced her into prep school. They make me study until midnight, lock me in my room, and keep me in until I get everything correct in my problem books. I can't live like this anymore. My aunt, who was listening from the side, was furious. That's educational abuse. Miu, run away from that house. I'll do something about it. But mom and dad are keeping an eye on me. Don't worry. I'll figure something out. Later, while my aunt called my parents in to discuss financial matters, I sneaked back home, took Miu, and ran away. I hid Miyu at my aunt's house and told my parents that I would appeal for educational abuse and neglect. We never laid our hands on her and we fed her properly. What part of that is abuse? You've already left the house, so stay out of it. Give Miyu back to us. I also consulted a lawyer, but he told me that we have little chance of winning the lawsuit since Miyu and I were both adults now, and there was no evidence of educational abuse or violence. What should I do? Oh, I'll go online and ask for advice. I made a post on social media about how Miyu and I have been treated by our parents and asked if anyone had any suggestions. Soon after, the post went viral. 
It spread everywhere and even got featured on a website as a tragedy of a beautiful prosthetic legged model. The power of the internet is truly amazing. As a result, the parents were identified and the father was transferred to a lower position for credibility issues. The mother's neighbors began to gossip about her and the arguments between the couple became too frequent that they divorced soon after. It's because you wrote something on your blog! Take responsibility! Pay me alimony! I got a call like that, but of course I ignored. My aunt told me my father was having a hard life at work, being backbitten as an abusive parent. My mother returned to her parents' home, but word had spread and they wouldn't let her in. A relative told me, someone who looked like your mother was working at a fishing factory. So I guess it all fits where it fits. It must be a tough environment for a mother who had been a housewife all her life, but I wish her the best. I am now staying at my aunt's house with Miyu. Miyu entered a famous university, got a job in research which she wanted, and even met a nice man at her company. She's enjoying life. Thanks for taking me with you that time. No, the things I did as a child, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm having so much fun living with you and auntie. Miyu. I'm modeling while giving back to my aunt. I lost my leg, but I realized many important things. From now on, I hope to be kind to others and live a positive life. <laughs>